My name is Dylan Faganel and welcome to Java EE8 Microservices. I'm a software engineer that has developed and led development of numerous web applications and software using Java and Java EE, the majority of which were built for enterprise and government clients. A main focus of mine is to create and design architectures that are highly scalable for an ever-increasing demand of users and customers. For the last few years, I've been heavily invested into the microservice architectural pattern as an alternative to the monolithic one that typically follows enterprise Java EE. This led me to creating and now being the lead developer of the Cumulus EE Java EE microservice framework, which won the Duke's Choice Award from Oracle. I'm also a big proponent of open source software and like to help the community whenever I can. The course will serve as a great introduction guide to what microservices are, how they compare to existing architectures and how they can be used to create a highly scalable, flexible and cloud-ready enterprise design. The course will provide you with the skills needed to build microservices in Java EE and similar frameworks and tools, how to integrate them together, as well as achieve interoperability with your existing monolithic Java EE application in order to enable a gradual migration for your environment. You will also learn how to package them up and prepare them for running in your cloud platform of choice. The goal is to enable you to start creating modern and robust application using your existing knowledge of enterprise Java EE. Before we start writing our microservices, we need to understand what they actually are and what they represent. This will be the focus of the first section of the course, where we'll also be looking at what kind of architectural advantages and enhancements microservices bring in comparison to more typical monolithic architecture you'll find today. We'll also look at how we can go about into breaking the Java EE monolith, a challenge many developers have been struggling with for years now. In the second section, we'll continue with an overview and installation of the required tools and libraries we'll use throughout the course. To show everything we have planned off, we'll use a typical and common real-world design of an enterprise e-commerce application. While a full-blown application would have many more components, for the purposes of this course, we'll focus on the four – customers, products, orders, and payments. This app would be typically contained in a single WAR or EAR archive and deployed on a standard Java EE application server. We'll go over how to identify and break the app into modules and rebuild it with microservices. In the third section of the course, we will continue to build our final application with additional microservices. In the last few years, we've seen a number of different Java microservice frameworks appear on the market, each of which usually takes a little different approach on how to achieve the solution. Some more heavily rely on Java EE technologies, while others rely on Spring technologies, with a few in between. In this course, we'll use three of them, Pyara Micro, Drop Wizard, and Spring Boot, each of which belongs to one of the group I described before. However, we'll still be mostly focused on Java EE technologies, as we'll see they're perfectly suitable for microservices when used in such a context. Throughout section two, three, and four, we'll be developing three microservices, each focused on one of the three frameworks, as well as several different components. Microservice number one will contain the customers, be built with Payara Micro and focus on the JIX RS framework and the Micro Profile Initiative. Microservice number two will contain the orders, be built with Drop Wizard and focus on the stateless design, integration, interoperability, monitoring, security and testing. And lastly, microservice number three will contain the payments, be built with Spring Boot and focus on the relation and integration between the Java EE and Spring ecosystems. Towards the end of section four, we will complete the development of all three of the microservices and construct the final application with them. By the end of this section, you'll understand and be able to think in terms of microservices and be ready to apply the architectural pattern to other real world problems. To finish the course off, in the last section, we'll take a dive into containers and Docker in order to learn how to build and package our microservices into self-contained independent platform agnostic modules that will enable us to deploy and run them in practically any environment we want, be it the biggest cloud platform or the smallest bare metal server. 
In order to more easily follow the course, you should have a basic knowledge of web services as well as Java EE in general. So, we've got a lot to talk about. Hope you're ready to start building modern, scalable, cloud-native applications. Let's get started.